On the 26th of November, I was kicked off Who Wants to Be a Millionaire for taking too long to answer the question. Take a look. Tell me what you think. Famous British interwar era aviator. Is it A, Charles Lindbergh, B, Amelia Earhart, C, Winifred Brown, or D, Wiley Post? Well, I 100% know this one, Joey. It's Jeremy. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you were that guy from Top Gear that was on Friends. <laughs> well, I 100% know this one, Jeremy. It's Winifred Brown. She was born in Sale in the historic county of Cheshire. It's now part of Greater Manchester. Ah, the interwar years, the roaring twenties, the dirty thirties. Except for the Great Depression and the Treaty of Versailles, everybody was having a pretty good time. Uh, they did have that prohibition thing though, so maybe it wasn't so great after all. Back then, flying was more akin to strapping out a pair of downhill skis and going down blindfolded than sitting in an Airbus at 30,000 feet watching a movie. So, we know she was British, she was an early aviator, but what made her famous? Well, in 1930, she won the King's Cup. It's a cross-country air race that has taken place annually since 1922. The King's Cup is one of the most prestigious prizes of British air racing. Not only did she win, she was the first woman to win. The crowd during the interwar years were a really different bunch, Jeremy. They were known as the Lost Generation. It's the generation born between 1883 and 1900. A lot of them ended up fighting in the First World War and afterward seemed to have a general sense of purposelessness and aimlessness. But they did have a real carpe diem attitude. I guess after the horrors they had been through, it made sense to seize the day, live life to its fullest and not worry about the daily grind. Winifred Brown was no exception to that philosophy, but she was an exceptional person and she lived an extraordinary life. She was born the 26th of November, 1899. If you look her up, you'll find that some entries say she was born in Brooklyn's. Now that could be because Brooklyn's was a brand new suburb of Sale back in 1899. But not to be confused with the famous aerodrome in Surrey of the same era. But in the 1901 census, it says she was born in Ashnapah, Mersey, and she's living at a house here on Harborough Road, number 48, a house called the Hollies. She was the daughter of Solly and Elsie Brown. In the 1901 census, he's down as a butcher. But I don't think he was in the back room with a meat cleaver. Solly was the successful director of a firm of butcher shops that were all over what we now call Greater Manchester. Everything you read about Winifred Brown mentions she was the daughter of elderly parents. Her father was 25 and her mother was only 28 when she was born. I wonder what that makes me. But I only mention it because it seems to fit the narrative you'll read about her. The doting, wealthy, elderly parents. She did seem to be a bit of a spoiled brat. She said she learned to roll her own cigarettes at the age of five, and at the age of ten, she weighed ten stone. Winifred moved to Salford at an early age and attended Bella Vista High School for Girls. She was teased about her weight at school, but she was popular enough to be the president of the Smokers Club and the Swearers Club. Now, I don't think these were official school clubs. She was expelled at the age of 14 for writing the headmistress can go to hell on the toilet wall, a rebel without a cause. But she was a happy, determined character, full of spirit. Her father encouraged her to try new things and find her calling. She played tennis, was a low handicap golfer, and played hockey and ice hockey. Although, like most I've seen around here, she wasn't much of a skater. Now, no offense, Jeremy, I'm Canadian. 
we do get our first pair of skates at our christening. <laughs> During the First World War, Winifred was a nurse. And it wasn't long after the war that Winifred started to show her need for speed. She went through at least two cars, generously donated by Solly, of course. She had a string of boyfriends, but one had a particularly exciting interest, flying. One day, they drove up to see the airplanes at the new Lancashire Aero Club at Woodford Aerodrome. She marveled at these new machines. One of the club members offered to take her up for a spin. How exciting it must have been. The noise, the sounds, the smells, and that view. Upon landing, Winifred Brown immediately asked to take lessons. Winifred had found her calling. All right, you know what you have to do if you want to see part two. Hit that like and subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel, head over to wickedacorn.com and become a member of the Brew Crew.